Uh, Diptika is on set with us uh, with today's press review. Uh, Dipti, you're starting uh, with Russia's war in Ukraine and concern from uh, Europe after Russia cut off gas supplies to both Poland and Bulgaria. That's right. There's a lot of that concern really playing out in the papers today, Haxi, uh, as it fears that Russia might move to end contracts with other European partners. Uh, Moscow switched off gas to Poland and Bulgaria yesterday, of course, after both countries refused to pay in rubles, which is something the Kremlin has been demanding. As uh, the French paper Le Monde notes, Germany has been providing gas to Poland and uh, as of yesterday and Greece doing the same thing to Bulgaria. But there's this feeling that this is really a, a retaliatory move, a, 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 quote, demonstration of force to scare Europe. At least that's what Le Monde says. The Guardian, uh, meanwhile, the British Daily, explains that this was a very deliberate move from uh, Russia, targeting Poland, which, of course, is staunchly militarily and politically aligned with Ukraine right now and um, is, is a genuine risk to Russia. And Bulgaria, which is less of a risk to Russia, but very heavily dependent on uh, its gas. So they're two different cases. And I think uh, the, the idea from The Guardian, at least, is that Russia is testing out the two countries to see if it could serve as a cautionary tale to other countries. And one German paper today uh, suggesting that Russia's move is actually a deliberate message to Germany, which is one of Russia's... Uh, main importers of gas. That's right. This is from the editor of the Frankfurter Allgemeine, the German paper, who says uh, today that Russia's move to stop gas to Poland and Bulgaria is indeed a test for Germany as well, one that uh, Berlin should respond to with more confidence and courage. He concedes that a similar move by Russia against Germany would have a massive impact, but that it's also an occasion for Germany to reduce its dependency uh, very quickly to avoid such a catastrophic situation, Axi. Well, we're moving now uh, on to India, where the bulldozer has become a symbol of Narendra Modi's uh, state power, also a crackdown on Muslims. That's right. The cra that crackdown against Muslims is being led under the under the guise of justice. Uh, that's according to the Washington Post today. In a recent example, a bulldozer charged through an Indian village and demolished shops owned by a Muslim man falsely accused of kidnapping a Hindu woman. Uh, so basically, the bulldozer is being used as a symbol to play out the tensions between Hindus and Muslims in India. The Washington Post explains that in New Delhi, for instance, bulldozers crushed parts of a heavily Muslim neighborhood following clashes with Hindus. It's been part of Hindu nationalist Narendra Modi's crackdown on Muslims from uh, things like banning headscarves in schools in one city to outlawing uh, Friday prayers in public. Uh, there's a really good opinion piece in, in, in the Indian media today. This guest writer here describes the scenes of that bulldozer attack in Delhi, which she says, you know, smashed the meager belongings of very poor people. It was shocking. She describes scenes of weeping families and distraught local businessmen. Uh, I quote that bulldozer represents a toxic politi politics of communal uh, Hindutva or Hindu nationalism, if you like. It represents a political strategy backed by wherever Modi's government is in power and enabled by his, quote, deafening silence. OK, well, moving on now uh, to some news here in France. Emmanuel Macron uh, has barely begun his second term as president and already a fair number of French politicians are eyeing up his job. That's right, because, of course, he'll have to step down after 2027 uh, rules obliging. The big question is who will take his spot. Among them, uh, Edouard Philippe, maybe, that he was uh, Emmanuel Macron's former prime minister, who actually created his own uh, political party amid rumours of a presidential run in 2027. His party, for the moment, is uh, pretty unknown and without the necessary, you know, leg up in politics, it might be hard for him to get any sort of strong political presence. Uh, there is also, according to Le Monde, Bruno Le Maire. He's the silver-haired uh, finance and economy minister who's hoping to use his goodwill in maintaining French businesses afloat during COVID as leverage to perhaps launch a presidential bid. He's got experience and stature and, importantly, some failure behind him, which apparently bodes well with French voters. Well, finally from you, uh, Dupti, it uh, seems you're not a French president, really, unless you're getting pelted with something. <laughs> In Macron's case, uh, most recently, uh, some cherry tomatoes, although apparently they didn't quite get him. No, no, he wasn't hit, okay. thanks to some nifty work from his secur security guard who sort of popped up that umbrella to fend off the cherry, cherry tomato attack. Anyway, it, the, the symboli symbolism is there, Haxi. Uh, Politico tells us that pelting French politicians is a French tradition. You remember Ségolène Royal was hit with a pastry... Uh, a cream pastry la uh, many years ago. François Hollande himself was covered in flour. Uh, Emmanuel Macron has had uh, quite a few attacks. Uh, he's been victim to not one, not two, but three egg attacks. 
uh, one before he was president, um, and twice since he's become president, including an egg that landed smack uh, on, on the on, on his head, and the yolk burst apparently. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's not funny. It's, it's <laughs> not funny. Even, le even less funny was a slap he received from a man who ended up getting a prison sentence uh, a while ago. So, you know, don't mess with the president. Don't mess with the president. <laughs> <laughs> Do take a look on with today's press review. Thank you very much indeed.